Recently, I've been playing City Skylines and I was really intrigued by the road creation tool. I've seen tools similar to this one in many games, but I never stopped to think about the way they actually worked. It seemed very useful to be able to draw curves this easily, and I wanted to understand the math behind this. Upon researching how these curves are generated, I came across many resources, but they were usually written in a very scientific way, which was cool because they helped me understand the math, but I wanted to explain the topic in a more visual way. What I found out was that the algorithm most of these games use is called Bezier Curves. For those of you who like digital art, you might have come across this algorithm in the form of the pen tool, for example in Photoshop. The pen tool uses this algorithm to allow the user to draw nice curvy lines. But how does it work? To understand how to generate curves, let's first begin with straight lines. Drawing a straight line is simple, all you need are two points. The shortest path between them is always a straight line, and for any two given points, there's always only one possible straight line connecting them. But what if we try to connect them with a curve? All of a sudden, there's an infinite number of ways we could do this. So how do we differentiate these lines? What makes the purple line different from the orange? To the human eye, the answer is simple. The purple line is longer and more curvy. But what does this mean to a computer? How do we express this through numbers? In the world of computer science and graphic design, this problem dates back to the very early days of computers. We can actually thank French car companies for creating the algorithms which are used to this day in most graphic design software and most video games which utilize curve generation. The algorithm was first developed by Paul de Costelgeau and further formalized and popularized by Pierre Bézier, after whom the lines were named Bézier Curves. To understand how he came up with the math, we must first understand the concept of a linear interpolation. Let's go back to a simple straight line connecting two points, point A and point B. We can then imagine a third point, point C, somewhere along the line in between the points. The position of point C is determined by a number which goes from 0 to 1, which we're going to call k. At k equals 0, the point C is at the beginning of the line, and for k equals 1, it's at the end of the line. So as we increase k from 0 to 1, the point C travels from A to B. So, so far we have point A, point B, and point C, whose position is determined by the linear interpolation, which we're going to write LERP for short, between A and B by the value K. This is all we need to define the position of point C so far. The next step is to duplicate this line, giving us two identical lines next to each other. Notice how the middle points of both lines are now positioned based on the same number k. We can now raise the middle point to form this triangular shape. So we still have our points A and B, and the middle point C, which we're going to call C1, because we have C2 over here, and the final point we're going to call D. The position of C1 is now lerp between A and B by the value k, and the position of C2 is lerp between B and D by the same value k. If we connect the points C1 and C2, we're going to end up with this interesting pattern. So we now have another line connecting points C1 and C2, and in the middle we have another point which we're going to call C. The position of C is now lerp between C1 and C2 by the value k. This is actually all we need to create a curve. If we track the position of point C as the value of k changes, you can see that it draws a curve between the first and the last point. And to change the shape of the curve, all we need to do is move the middle point around. In this example, I'm moving the middle point up and down, which affects the intensity of the curve. We can even animate the position of the middle point to change the shape of the curve as the value of k goes from 0 to 1. This is already enough to achieve some very interesting shapes, but I want to take it a bit further before we start playing around. What we've created so far is called a quadratic Bezier curve. It's a Bezier curve with three control points, the beginning of the line, the end of the line, and the middle point which controls the shape of the curve. But if we add another control point, we can gain much more control over the shape. For this, we need a cubic Bezier curve. Our current configuration uses three lines to generate the curve, but for the cubic Bezier curve, we are going to need six lines in total. With six lines, we now have four control points, start point, end point, and two points in between which control the shape. You can see how much more control we now have over how the line bends. 
With this, it's possible to draw any kind of curve we want. And to allow us to draw a continuous line, all we need to do is attach multiple cubic Bezier curves together. But we'll get to that in a moment. First, let's write down what we have so far. The logic is pretty much the same as what we had before, but with more points. C1 goes between A and B, C2 goes between B and D, and C3 goes between D and E. Then we have C4, which goes between C1 and C2, and C5, which goes between C2 and C3. The final point, which draws the line, is C, which goes between C4 and C5. The next thing we have to do in order to be able to draw a continuous line is to attach multiple Bezier curves together. This is fairly simple. All I need to do is assign the end point of the first line to be the beginning of the second line. Also, we don't actually need to draw all of these lines. For a single curve, it's enough to see the control points, so we only need to draw the lines which are connected to the start and the end points of the curve. Applying all of this, I've made a Unity tool with which I can place points anywhere on the screen and uh, adjust their control points, allowing me to draw any kind of curve I want. One little detail I also added is that if two control points are attached to the same point, moving one control point will automatically move the other one as well, placing it exactly 180 degrees across. This way, I avoid having my line broken, like in this example. And that's pretty much it, the Bezier curve.